This is a trip back in time, and the cars and urban scenery are just as interesting as the trolleys and trains. Are you ready to go back to the 1950s for some train fun? At one time, a massive intra-urban empire stretched from Milwaukee around Lake Michigan, through Chicago suburbs, and into South Bend. This Charles Smiley Presents show really shows that color and variety. I am particularly impressed with the maps used to show the state of the system through the years. Please do click subscribe and ring the bell to see more from our video vault. The Chicago streetcar lines were claimed to be the largest system of its kind at one time. From 1858, it grew from a number of small lines using horse-drawn trolleys that ran on tracks in the streets. Various attempts at using steam power and cable car technology failed to become the rule. Frank Sprague invented the first streetcar in 1888. The electric streetcar was a way of solving many problems, and by 1890 the electric streetcars started to take hold. The development of this equipment came rapidly. It took many more years of smaller lines combining into what eventually was one giant system. The Chicago surface lines boasted of 1,000 miles of track and over 3,000 streetcars of various designs. This trolley was one of a batch of 600 built between 1908 and 1909 by the Pullman Company for the Chicago Railway, one of the four predecessor lines. These wood body cars were nicknamed the Old Pullmans. Here is number 560, still in service around 1949. These could seat 40, and it is packed. Another predecessor line, the Chicago City Railway, ordered 125 of these in 1901. They were built by St. Louis Car Company. The Chicago Railway built 215 of these 1911 models in their own shops. These two were wood-bodied. The roof is an arch type, giving it a bit more modern look. The four major streetcar lines that finally merged by 1914 became the Chicago Surface Lines, or CSL. This is one of the 45 that CSL built in their own shops in 1922. Motors, electrical equipment, and trucks were bought, but everything else is CSL engineering and manufacturing. The CSL shops by 1923 built 65 of these all-steel cars that seated 48. It's remarkable that years ago, streetcar lines often built much of their own equipment. It would be hard to imagine any modern transit company doing that today. The next five streetcars are members of the 65 all-steel CSL-built cars from this class of 1923. These cars seated 48. The white band across the front indicates that these are one-man cars. The motorman or operator took your fare you entered through the front. This is one of 350 cars built in 1910, nicknamed the New Pullmans. It was a little smaller than the 1909 Pullman Group. This is one of 104 1922 cars built by J.G. Brill Company. You'll notice throughout these 1950 scenes that many private autos were still pre-World War II models. By June of 1950, the Korean War would start. A shortage of steel crimped new car sales a bit, but in five years, new car sales would increase in millions of cars that would seriously threaten the surface street lines. Streetcars would be slowed by heavier auto traffic, and motorists didn't care much for the streetcars pounding the asphalt up and taking up valuable street space.
following cars were also Brill built in the early days of 1906 to 1908. This was a batch of 400 cars. It took a while to fill that order. These were built for the original Chicago City Railway. They were wood bodied. These seams show a conductor on board. This two-man type car was once the standard until wage increases brought in the one-man cars. These 40-seat cars were about 48 feet long. They were numbered from 5201 to 5600. Notice the paired windows that had upper panels with curved ends. The conductor on board took all the fares and watched the back door. This saved a lot of time in rush hours. The conductor did all the fare collecting and kept order. Another conductor task was to flag the operator at railroad crossings that nothing would be bearing down on them if they crossed. Here the conductor steps out to flag the operator across another streetcar line. The operator only ran the streetcar and didn't need to collect fares in a two-man car. That allowed trolleys to get underway while the conductor was engaged with taking fares, making change, and issuing transfers. The conductor was also the guy that ran out in the middle of the busy street at the ends of each route to change the trolley poles. This is one line's end where the cars would queue up to switch over to the adjacent return track. The trolley poles needed switching here too. How great was that? And there's much more in the DVD. The link to the DVD is in the description below. Do me a favor and hit subscribe and ring the little bell to get notifications from us. And if you like this video, please click the like button. If you didn't, let us know by leaving a comment below. Or please just leave a comment to say hi.